Here are some tips for your first time installing vinyl plank flooring so you can avoid the mistakes we made. Stay to the end to check out some of our pros and cons. Home improvement. With love. Welcome to our channel. We're Darius and Aki LeGrant of DIY Power Co. In this video, we'll show you a laundry room makeover that transformed old flooring to new interlocking vinyl planks. Click the link in the description to see how we also installed an accent wall with peel and stick tile to complete the update. So let's get into it. First we removed all appliances and floor trim. A pry bar and hammer were used to remove the quarter round. For this DIY we kept the existing baseboards and old flooring. Each section of the laundry room was carefully measured and drawn on a diagram. We multiplied the longest length of the room by the width to calculate the square footage. Each box of planks shows its square footage to help determine how many boxes are needed. Remember to get a few extra planks. Believe us, you'll need it. Links for the tools are in the description below. We started on the left side of the room due to the tongue and groove interlocking design of the planks. Our first challenge was cutting the door jams. Installing a floating floor is nice because there's no nailing or gluing and it's easy to repair or replace. Check your layout to avoid sliver planks. We'll show you what we did later. This laundry room has two door openings, so there were four door jams that we needed to fit the planks under. We tried this step without a power tool, but our handsaw didn't cut all the way in for us. We found out a box cutter doesn't work either. We eventually picked up this cordless oscillating tool and it made the task so much easier. We used a piece of flooring under the oscillator to cut the door jam. Then we used the 5-in-1 tool to pull out chipped wood pieces. This allowed the new flooring to easily slide under the door jam for a cleaner look. We did this for all four door jams. Next, we taped spacers to the baseboards to create expansion gaps. These gaps allow vinyl plank flooring to expand and contract when there are temperature and humidity changes. This is very important in a laundry room area to prevent planks from buckling over time. The first row of planks is very important to keep straight regardless if the wall is straight or not. We heard the planks click together, but that didn't mean they were aligned correctly. We gently used a rubber mallet to engage the interlocking mechanism. We realized early that we had to double check the alignment of our seams. The interlocking mechanism has to be aligned for the next row to securely lock in place. It can be quickly fixed by reattaching the plank. We have to tell you guys that for us, getting the first row of planks down was hard. We had to be patient with this first time DIY project because we were literally learning as we went along. Most of our mistakes were made on the first row. We learned that we had to reverse the plank in order to draw the line for our cuts. This way the interlocking side would be at the seam. We also learned the hard way that you may not want to break the planks while kneeling down. Yeah, we damaged a few of them because of my Herculean strength. <laughs> we believe beginners should always have extra planks. Here's a close-up of the interlocking design of this flooring. Let's see if we did better the second time around. It hit the, you keep hitting the. Yeah. That was so easy. Did you help me? So we eventually learned how to break the planks and got the last piece in. We used a pull bar at the end of the row to close any gaps between the planks. The second row was started with a shorter plank to stagger the seams. Installing the last plank for this row went much smoother.
We also learned how to keep debris out of the grooves so that the planks would fit securely. We continued to rotate the plank patterns by pulling them from various boxes. With each row, we both gained confidence in how to score, cut, and lay the planks. It was important to remember not to damage the tongue and grooves during the flooring installation. We were installing over existing tile that acted as our clean and level subfloor. With these planks, an underlayment was not needed. As we worked together, we began to see the new floor take shape. This time, the pry bar was used to pull the seams of two planks together. We now had to face the challenge to cut a sliver plank around the corner. In hindsight, we could have shortened the width of our first row of planks to create more space on this side. We used an L-shaped ruler to trace and score a small piece of plank. Scoring and cutting a small piece was definitely harder than expected and something you want to avoid if possible. This took us a couple of tries, but we finally got the planks to all fit together. Thankfully, when we add the trim, it will cover the corner. We had to make another cut at the end of a plank to fit around the other corner. This worked out fine, but a planned adjustment to the length of the first plank in this row could have given us more plank to fit around the corner. We also had our first lengthwise plank cut. It's possible, but difficult to score a long straight line with a box cutter. We tried. It can be done in a small space like this with minimal lengthwise cuts. However, we chose to use a circular saw with a carbide blade and laser to make it a little easier on us. We would highly suggest a circular saw power tool if you're tackling larger projects. We ended up with another tiny cut by the door jam in that same row. We feel this could have been prevented with better planning of the length of that first starter plank. If you have a row that runs into corners and requires lengthwise cuts, take your time planning out the layout of your planks of that row before you begin. Another tip, when using a pull bar, use a spare piece of plank as a buffer so you won't accidentally damage the fragile interlocking grooves. We only had a few more lengthwise cuts, so our circular saw came in handy. We were so happy to install this plank because that meant we were ready to add the waterproof cord around molding. A miter box and saw is a great beginner tool for making angled cuts on quarter round molding. Instead of using nails, we used all purpose construction adhesive to glue the molding to the baseboard. We didn't want to glue it to the planks so a future floor replacement would be easier. Even with our mistakes, we were so proud of our first time installing vinyl plank flooring as a part of our small laundry room makeover DIY. This flooring turned out amazing. And we want to know in the comments, would you install vinyl plank flooring in your home? We want to give a special thanks to our sponsor for this video, Ken. So Ken, we just want to know, what do you think about this project? It's great. It looks like a completely new room. And my favorite part is the flooring. Check out our pros and cons to see if this is your next DIY home improvement project. And remember, you can DIY too. DIY Power Couple YouTube channel is your source to help you unleash your inner DIY power. And if you like videos like these, be sure to check out these other videos next.